and welcome back to our Masterclass series brought to you by The Banker magazine. My name is Michelle Price, I'm business editor of The Banker and I'm joined here today by John Mason, the CEO of Declear Utilities, a division of SmartStream Technologies and today we're talking about reference data. Welcome John. Um, so I think it'd be fair to say that reference data is one of the more um, esoteric areas of the financial services and technology industry. So for the benefit of the lay viewer and for me, could you sort of explain um, you know, the importance of reference data and the challenges uh, that the industry is currently confronting in this space? Sure, Re reference data is pretty much core, to be honest. If you think of any transaction that's undertaken, there are elements to it which are very specific to the transaction itself. So the quantity of units bought, the price paid, but there are also elements that, that stay the same no matter what. So the actual code itself, if I had to go and buy IBM on the stock exchange, IBM would have a code. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be referred to by that code. So that's, that's the reference data element. So it exists across all the transactions that any institution will do in any of the markets. And it tends to split into three main areas. You'll have securities information, so the codes themselves around IBM. You'll have the legal entity information, so what's the legal structure mm -hmm. into which that code fits and then the standing settlement instructions. The instructions between the banks as to how that particular transaction is paid for, how it's settled across the institutions. So what's the challenge in this space then? What are you guys addressing? The challenge is that there are lots of codes. <laughs> um, if you look across all of the markets, there are market identification codes. So IBM traded on the London Stock Exchange might have a different code to IBM traded on one of the MTFs throughout Europe or uh, one of the multilateral trading facilities that have cropped up in the last few years, the alternative trading venues. Mm -hmm. So there are any number of codes that actually refer to the same object. It's a lot like language in that respect. Okay. And there'll be different references for the same codes. So the challenge is maintaining that consistency across multiple institutions, across geographic borders. So if an organization trades in a particular product with a particular entity, on behalf of a particular client, then there's any number of different codes that can impact on that transaction. And the trick is making sure that everyone's referring to the same thing in the same way. Okay, so in that respect, your job is getting harder, not easier, especially post MIFID and the rise of new trading venues. It has got harder. There, there have been more codes. So uh, an organization on, let's say, on CHI-X will be a dot, dot X suffix. Mm -hmm. uh, on the London Stock Exchange, it'll be dot L and so on. So there are a number of extra codifications or symbols, um, as, as we would refer to them, within the industry. And, and that complexity, that cross-coding matrix, is becoming more complex as, as time goes on. So in terms of uh, the issue gaining prominence, is it partly related to the increase in complexity? I mean, is there a cost and risk issue associated with this challenge as well? Uh, there are costs and risks. Uh, there's no two ways about that. Transparency is a, is a great leveller. People want to understand who they've transacted with, what exposure they have to a particular security. So understanding or a common uh, codification structure to understand particularly what your exposure is to any given instrument or what your exposure is to any given legal entity does mean you want that consistent structure across all of your data. Um, so transparency, cost, there's an extra cost incurred in getting to that level of consistency today are all factors which, which impact reference data today. So in terms of within financial institutions, how are firms addressing this issue, assuming they are addressing this issue? Yes, they're addressing <laughs> it. They can't uh, just bury their head in the sand and, and ignore it. Uh, they're addressing it normally through internal teams. Um, the increase of offshore components within those organisations. Some organisations have outsourced to third party um, organisations. Uh, others have looked to people such as ourselves to provide managed services where we're taking on board some of that capability. So they're managing it in different ways. I think probably the most preeminent way of managing though is still internal using some form of enterprise data management platform and having a lot of people manage that data right from sourcing it from the vendor right the way through to distributing it to the end clients within the banks themselves. And for some organisations, that's tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars a year in spend. Mm -hmm. So bearing in mind the price tag attached to the issue, are you finding that there's more uh, executive C-level buy-in, that there's more governance around the data problem, or is there a little bit more scope for interaction from the C-level? I, th I think there's more scope, to be honest. I think three or four years ago, we saw the introduction of the CDO, the chief data officer uh, within organisations. That seems to have slipped 
Um, all that significance of that role seems to have slipped in the last couple of years where now data seems to have gone back to being owned by operations or owned by other areas in the bank and not a dedicated ownership structure as we had. Mm -hmm. And what, why do you think that has slipped? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. I think probably operations um, has taken uh, more of a lead in, in looking to sort data because ultimately the impact of bad data is felt by operations. Um, so I think that the, the specific nature of the data that's involved has meant operations have got involved and maybe an overall governance from a, a chief data officer has, has, been, has been deemed too, too broad a spectrum in terms of the overall data management. Where do you draw the line in terms of is it email data or is it transaction mm -hmm. data? So maybe banks have, have refined the role to make it more specific over the, over the time. But I think an increase in governance around that data would be a good thing.